Welcome to the Regenerate Your Reality webcast series. This is our 14th episode, and it's so exciting for you to all join this regenerative movement and be here today. Today, we are going to focus on the topic of conscious capitalism and regenerative businesses. And it's such an honor and excitement to have Jackson and Natalia here with us. I'm bringing them in right now, and um, I would just love to just go dive right into your backgrounds and how you became a conscious capitalist. So, Jackson, Natalia, start. Yeah, we can give a little, yeah, of the backstory of how and why we got here. We're two uh, city kids, or were. Um, who now live in the jungle in Costa Rica, growing our own food and uh, providing that nourishment uh, to the our local community, but largely quickly expanding to this whole country and maybe even beyond. So it is a pretty good story of how we ended up here. We can tell it together, try to make it concise. Mm-hmm. Um, I got here to Costa Rica on my bicycle. In 2017, I flew to Alaska on my own. This was before I had met Natalia. Um, and I managed to ride my bicycle from Anchorage, Alaska, all the way down to Costa Rica. I was a YouTuber at the time, you could say. I have over a thousand videos posted to my YouTube channel since 2014 when I started. Um, and I documented many travels all over the world, uh, including this two year bike ride from Uh, Alaska to Costa Rica and talking about kind of business or conscious capitalism that was kind of my first go at it because I've always been someone who never wanted to work a corporate job or work for anybody and at the time when I was younger in my early 20s I just wanted to travel see the world I grew up in Los Angeles so I felt never really connected to that lifestyle and I wanted to figure out what I was really passionate about in life So I wanted to explore the world and I figured out how to make a little income from that. So I've posted so many YouTube videos so consistently and, you know, through avenues like Patreon and community donations and Google AdSense, I was able for a number of years to live, you know, a pretty humble, low budget life, but while traveling the world and in my travels, I figured out that my passion and what I wanted to do was to live in nature, live as sustainably as possible, like a really high next level form of sustainability, which we're still working on getting there, even beyond food. Um, But yeah, so I worked and volunteered on many farms along the way, along my travels, while making videos, of course, and then realized that having like a small family farm and a business around that is what I wanted to do. So I ended up ending my bike ride here in Costa Rica and decided to very, you know, swiftly uh, accomplish that project. And now we're here. I've been here for almost four years. Natalia came like, and we met maybe six, yeah, like six months into me being here. And we can get into more detail, but since since landing here and deciding to plant roots you know we've transformed a uh, eight acre piece of land that had almost no fruit trees was old uh deforested cattle grazing land and we've planted and transformed it into a food forest and run a, a growing successful business out of there and we've done it all together you want to say your background of how you got here mm. I guess with the vision and um, landing place of being a like conscious capitalist, I would say, I mean, it started in college taking, I majored in environmental studies and just learning of all the, the bad things that we're doing to the planet and such. I always knew I needed to do things differently and um, similarly to Jackson, volunteered on an organic farm in in Holland, um, and that was like the first time I saw like a potato being grown, like anything, and it's just 
crazy. I was like, I was 20 years old and I didn't know the most basic thing of being a human, growing your food. So that was really like, um, shook me up and, and, um, um, what was it? planted the seed in my mind that, that food, food sustainability was where I wanted to focus. Um, and then taking classes in university, um, I studied permaculture after and was always, always had the goal in my mind, the vision, like growing my food. I need to get land, plant fruit trees, planting trees. That's what we have to do. There's nothing more important we can do in this lifetime than planting trees, being close to the land, regrounding. <laughs> that was just like, there was no, no other way. Mm -hmm. So um, I went on to study uh, gastronomy in Italy. Why don't you explain to people what that is? Cause gastronomy? Yeah, most people yeah. think you went to cooking school. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Dean wrote gastronomist. I think it's technically gastronome. <laughs> people often get, yeah, they're like, oh, you studied either to be a chef or um, astronomy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's... Be cool. I mean, usually it's it's to become a chef, but this school in Italy is um just focus on everything having to do with food, so social, political, cultural, the actual practical cooking of food. Um, that's um the gastronomy that I studied is just the different food cultures, um, history of them. Why, like for example, Costa Rican? What is Costa Rican food? Uh, like. Food. <laughs> what? Why is it that? What's the history of the land that that made people eat what they do today? And what are the problems associated with the modern um, industrial food system? So that's where I was um, in Italy, and then COVID hit. So <laughs> Jackson invited me here to Costa Rica, and I thought I would come for a few weeks. And here I am. I left all my stuff in Italy, never went back. <laughs> Just everything happened for me to like live the dream, was handed to me to like live what I had been dreaming for so long. Yeah, to kind of sum it up <laughs> most concisely, three and a half years ago, Natalia and I got here. We weren't even in a relationship. We were just friends. We were travelers. We didn't have land, didn't have a business, had yeah. nothing. We, we had support for sure from our families, which helped us start this project. That's for sure. But we didn't have any of the things put in place that we're living now. And three and a half years later, we have a beautiful family, a baby, hundreds of fruit trees, grows tons of food and have three full-time employees and have a growing business in about three and a half years and doing it all we think quite ethically with a very high standard of sustainability that we can talk about all the way from supporting and employing your local community to the ingredients and inputs of the business like hyper hyper local for us and then even to the packaging like mm -hmm. we're trying to to not miss any level of the distribution system of foundation creation to getting to the person's plate or whatever. Uh, we're trying to hit all those levels at the highest standard we can. Um, with yeah, the but, products with, we make and with how we live and how we feed ourselves. Mm. Everything goes to the bank. Yeah, and we're still a small business, but growing rapidly. So it'll be interesting to see how everything scales. Um, but we've talked for a while. So Jean, maybe... Yeah, oh I love it. I it's it's so beautiful because we've had we're we're almost neighbors. I mean, we're in the same neighborhood and we started our food forest around the same time and our families become 50% food sovereign in just two after two years because of the amount of yuca, sweet potatoes, bananas, plantains that we're just pumping and there's just so much potential when you start to plant trees. And I love Natalia, like say that like, planting trees is, is one of our big missions in life. And it's for the generations to come for the animals, for the biodiversity. 
I'd love to dive into our definitions of conscious capitalism. I have just two slides to pop up here and then we'll rift on conscious capitalism. Um, the, the term was, I guess, coined by the Whole Foods co-founder, uh, John Mackey. And there's also a book called Conscious Capitalism and some great examples of companies that are really well known for conscious capitalism is Whole Foods and Patagonia are the two big two. And then small companies, uh, your company, Jungle Foods, which I'm a partner at and, and our farm as well. There's so many businesses that greenwash themselves and call themselves conscious or um, green. And we have to be very careful about what is real and how the environment is actually being treated, how the humans are, um, how we're all interacting in our ecosystems. And this is showing the permaculture ethics here and, and then the ethics of what is defined from conscious capitalism. And it all is just looking at how do we care for our environment? How do we care for the humans involved? How do we have fair share? And I just, I, we really love the philosophy of permaculture in integrating that into our regenerative business. So maybe we can just talk about how, how can we shift our mindset from just earning, making a business to earn money to making a business to, for the betterment of all, for the betterment of our lands, for the betterment of the people that are working with us. And I work on Jungle Project and it's a project all about trees, training and trade. And it's in the Caribbean and Tori Alba and there's 28 farming families involved. And it's a four year program and it's it's the the business jungle is two sides it's one all dedicated to social and nonprofit of building the farmers um education and planting trees and the other part is the business side where we're selling the products from the business um which is breadfruit and other agroforestry products but how can we really integrate the social side and the business side to, to, for the betterment of all? So I'll pass it back to you too. Yeah, all right. Well, first I'll say, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who likes to yeah get the definitions out and, and also just be like brutally honest about what we're talking about. You know, you mentioned the greenwashing, while, you know, I even wanted to create this conversation topic on the term conscious capitalism, because that's just the easiest way to explain, like, you know, having a for profit business where you're trying to do the best you can to be within some, you know, sustainability ethics. If you want to get really hardcore and real about sustainability, there is no real fully conscious capitalism like you even brought up patagonia and whole foods being the ones to coin the term if you want to be as conscious and sustainable as possible you wouldn't have the ambitions to have a huge for-profit business where you're selling goods and services all over the world that's inherently not going to be as sustainable if your ambition was to grow food and sell it to your local community it's so if you want to be as conscious as possible, that's what you're going to do. Um, because when you scale up and you source things from all around the world and you're building manufacturing facilities and stores and not doing them with entirely, uh, you know, renewable and natural materials, you've already branched into the non-conscious world. And we're living examples of that. We have super high ethics and standards, but we do have large business ambitions that are going to get in the way of being 100% hardcore. I live on my land. I only interact with my local community. I'm not flying all over the world. I'm not putting products in other countries. 
we do want to do that. Um, but you know, I just want to keep it real because it's so easy to just pat yourself on the back and then, and not, and not just mention also that, you know, because even the word capital Nobody is doing it perfect. You... I mean, maybe like just the small ones that are really just staying in their community, right? But that's not the way we want to live. Yeah, yeah. we, we want to go bigger. We want, and we want to do it better than what most, how most companies are doing. But like I was talking to my dad the other day when he was visiting, who's a big businessman for his whole life. I said, can you name one like hugely successful company that is just like very objectively sustainable and good for the world? You literally can't. It, 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 because the real truth to sustainability is just local. Being everyone around the world should be in a small local community having their own circular little mm -hmm. economy. We have been so honestly kind of brainwashed. You know, we grew up going to Whole Foods and going to food conventions and you get inspired when you see chocolate making companies from all over the world and creating these amazing products. You could get them in this whole globalized food system and we have fallen a little bit into that world where we think it would be cool to be you know one of those companies so you know i just wanted to say that to keep it real that we're you know we're not claiming um you know scaling to a certain degree is always going to involve you know lowering your your total level of sustainability but to move forward on the you know more positive aspects um you know I think, you know, I went on a little rant there, but I think the question was about, you know, conscious, uh, a cap conscious capitalism, what it means to us. Um, you know, the most, uh, you know, many people argue that capitalism itself is inherently not, not sustainable, not sure. fair. Yeah. So it's just we're yeah, we're still in the system of capitalism and making it the most sustainable, fair, good for the planet and people as we can but still it's not perfect totally and here's yeah one thing i wanted to mention um you know why we're even having this topic today because everyone who kind of lives in our community who wants to have a farm and you know is into yoga and permaculture and sustainability the biggest problem i've seen and i've lived here for four years now the biggest thing that prevents people from being able to achieve this lifestyle long term is that they're not financially stable or abundant enough and they have to go fly back home to Canada or England and the US and and go back to work and live not within the um you know the lifestyle that they want so you know we all have these dreams we think i thought a little bit too when i moved here you're just going to be living off the land you don't need a lot of money you'll be able to do all the weed whacking and make all the products and do all mm -hmm. the distribution and have no help and just eat your bananas and potatoes on the land and it's all going to be great. And that's simply not the reality that I've seen. You know, we have registered food company, we have land that we bought, we have taxes, we have employees, uh, things break, you have to repair them. This, this lifestyle, if you want to live comfortably, it does cost money. And so if you really want to, you know, live, mm -hmm. Uh, and feel good and safe and 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 live the lifestyle sustainably you do need a source of income it doesn't need to be insane you don't need to be a multi-millionaire yeah, okay but then we go into okay me for example how am i living the conscious capitalism with my very small chocolate food business i'm buying directly from the cacao farmers so i'm paying directly to them the cost of you don't the, pay a, a middleman a middleman yep. yeah and i'm paying them a higher price than like on the global cacao market mm -hmm. and the pack okay people land it's also organic or maybe not certified organic because then again people it costs to be certified but but you you don't also buy and we have planted many cacao trees and we'll eventually be using our cacao yeah. to make our bars but we only planted our trees two years ago so, no, but it's good to be supporting because also yeah. you think of that if we grow our own, we're, we're 
Like I like to be supporting yeah. farmers in all of Costa. And like all the chocolate you sell, and Natalia makes and sells a lot of chocolate in our local community. You know, a lot. We have we do a farmers market almost every day. Um, and you don't buy cacao from any huge farms. These are no, relatively small, small local yeah. uh, organic uh, cacao farms. So yeah, that's land. That's people. Your packaging is mainly compostable. Yeah compostable packaging um and we sell it in our local community um so you know for us it's just about trying to take every level of each step in a more conscious way you know i i sell our only registered food product that we have permission to sell like in any store or supermarket all over costa rica um is our, our, our fermented coconut crackers the coconuts come from wild harvested coconuts all along the beaches of our local southwest Costa Rica area. A local Costa Rican neighbor of ours goes down, harvests the wild coconuts, brings them up to our land, like a 30-minute drive from where the coconuts are grown up the mountain to our farm. We have local uh, employees that live in our little town right here who can walk to work that prepare and make the products. And then my packaging you know, I could choose to use plastic packaging that would cost, you know, five cents per bag. Instead, we buy 100% certified bio-based compostable packaging that breaks down in your home compost in under a year. And it costs me 40 cents per bag rather than five cents. So there's an example and why when I was talking to my dad, can you name a massively big, successful, conscious business? You really can't because you're always going to be making a little bit of sacrifice of spending a bit more money, paying your employees more, paying for better, more sustainable packaging, which also means lowering profits to a degree. Um, you know, there's also obviously a market of you can make the argument that you can be more successful if you can show the customer that you are being more sustainable because there's a huge community of people who are prioritizing those businesses. But as a small business, we are lowering our initial profits in order to try to do it better than having just no ethics behind it and, you know, buying cheaper coconuts that are not as local um, and having plastic based packaging. We could increase the profits, but we're trying to, to do it a little better. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, we touched on a lot of topics there. One of uh, circular economy, which I think is really important to touch on as well, because um, and also the waste aspect. Uh, most businesses are are based on extractive e extraction and and for the profit of the stakeholders and shareholders. And I think that when we really start going down to the where, where is it sourced? How is it grown? Giving a higher wage and a higher amount of compensation to the farmers that we're supporting, having an amazing work environment, and, and then down to the the product of that's just amazing that you're going with a biodegradable option, even though it's 35 cents more. And it's just, it, it goes back to the earth. So I'm going to share my screen for just a moment, showing some of the aspects of circular economy. So circular economy is based on designing out waste and pollution, keeping the products and materials as long as possible and regenerating our natural systems. So, you know, the capitalism is based on linear out of sight, out of mind. And circular economy is something that I think is super important for us to understand and start to integrate into our regenerative businesses because it supports our local economy, our local farmers, and the earth, and is really trying to eliminate the waste. And right now, most of the companies creating the waste in our world are not held accountable at all. And 
Um, so how can we redesign and rethink about how how we live and how we create our businesses and how we create our connections and collaborations? So, um, yeah, other ways of of really getting involved in being a conscious capitalist in is being a conscious consumer and like flipping the switch on that like okay we have a regenerative business and we live in a way that we're supporting our local economy and we are we're looking at how all of every everything we buy where it does come from and is is it going to last long or is it going to just fade out and and be waste so i i really love your amazing business and um i really love ours and it it really gives us this alignment like this 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 way of living that isn't aligned with our our ethics aligned with with abundance we're getting um, amazing abundance from these businesses and then also the aspect of tending to the land so um yeah where do you see yourself and the growth in the next few years with the products from the land or um integrating i know that for example, Natalia grows cardamomo and like how integrating that into the chocolates and so. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we mentioned before, we're, we already planted many cacao trees. So we're always looking at how we can move closer to that goal of greater self-sufficiency, uh, sovereignty, all that. So for my chocolate business, it's What's the next step? It's growing the cacao itself. So not just being a bean to bar company, but tree to bar, like everything grown on the land. And maybe I will, it will take a few years for the trees to produce. But while we get there, like, for example, we were using, I think we used our own uh, chili peppers, uh, black pepper, like just some, some of the, inclusion some of the toppings for the chocolates are have already been from the land and in, in our coconut crackers which are now in stores oh, yeah. our spices the all oregano the, the basil yeah. all the herbs uh we we use too many coconuts to source it from our land because they grow much better on the beach and we live uh, 2,000 feet above sea level so we're never going to be able to supply all the coconuts for our business uh, but they're wild harvested anyways, which is even better than farmed. But yeah, we're we're using our spices and as many ingredients as possible in these products uh, mm -hmm. from the land. That's what it's all about. So where do we see it going? Yeah, like what kind of infrastructure have we put in? There's a lot of potential. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely talk about it. So mm -hmm. what I've noticed from living here, you know, living on the land almost three years now, but being in Costa Rica uh, almost four years, is that there's certain items with our kind of small scale, eight, eight acre family farm, there's certain items that are never going to be commercial things that we can sell, like mangoes and exotic fruits and greens and lettuces, um, even though that is a really good business out here, because believe it or not, you know, we live in an area with farmers markets all the time and there's hundreds and hundreds of vendors and less than 1% of the vendors are local organic farms. And those local organic farms get bought out and sold out every single week. There is so much more demand than there is supply of local organic simple foods, bananas, mangoes, avocados, lettuce onion like it's so crazy uh in these markets and in our community um and people support all of the local organic farms but there's just not that many of them it's it's so crazy you'd think that at this point with so many expats and uh tourists and people who clearly value and want to pay the little bit extra 
um, there's still not a proper supply of that. So, um, you know, we do contribute in a way. We grow eight varieties of bananas that are way more delicious. Uh, and as a young farm, that's probably the one thing we get the most calories every week from our farm or from our eight different varieties. And we sell out and can sell hundreds and hundreds of bananas every single week just in our local community. Mm -hmm. But um, so, yeah, there's certain items that we're never going to be able to uh, supply on a commercial level. But on the flip side, there are a handful of items that we absolutely can. Things like vanilla bean, things like coffee. Uh, cacao to do cacao nibs and chocolate pineapple pineapple and we're gonna have our first big um peanut peanut, peanut, peanut harvest yeah and next like month and like <laughs> sacha inchi nuts so those are already like almost 10 items that we've figured out grow really well in our area they're really amazing items that there's not enough supply of them and we can grow those on a pretty large scale versus some of the other things like big huge you know fruit trees on a on a small farm you can't have a crazy amount of an all year round production so um yeah you know it's all about uh having a plan a strategy consistency and just planting way more things than you even think you're gonna need that's a that's a huge um, thing that I've learned my first couple years here I thought oh we'll do like 10 of this and 10 of that and they're going to grow so big and they're going to provide so much but in reality uh, you, you can never have too much if it all fits within an area you should you know try to be as useful of every square inch of the available mm -hmm. land you have to be um, you know functional and utilitarian and you can get some food out of it while also building up the natural ecosystem because mm -hmm. everything is you know, permaculture base, planted all within each other, all no chemicals, pesticides at all. Um, so yeah, I kind of wanted to mention that we sort of have, or at least for me, I think Natalia would agree, sort of a three tiered uh, mission for what we're even doing here. Number one is to grow the most amount, the most diverse amount of delicious, high quality food to feed our family. That's everything from the fruits to the vegetables to the spices to the roots and starches to the beans. Um, so, for instance, we grow, you know, we probably have 60 different species of exotic fruit tree, eight varieties of bananas. Uh, but we also have our roots like Papa Chiricana and sweet potato and malunga and taro for our root starches because you need that actual, you know, hefty bulk to actually feed yourself. And then what about the spices? So we have put in black pepper, cinnamon trees, turmeric, ginger, cardamom, vanilla bean, because you need to have your food spice. And then beans, we're always trying to grow, you know, more beans because we eat a lot of that. We mm -hmm. even grew soybeans and peanuts. Um, so trying to hit all the different levels of what we actually need to survive and thrive rather than just focusing on one thing like fruit trees but no we need all these different foods so number one mission we have is to be food sovereign for our family and eat the most delicious diet from what we grow then the second tier is to provide uh, and sell the surpluses we have to our local community which we've already started doing uh, we have our products now in four different farmers markets on a weekly basis. So four days of the week, our products are at a farmer's market. We're here in our town of Tina Maste. Uh, today, we have a friend who sells for us in Uvita, uh, tomorrow in San Isidro in the city. And then on Fridays, we do Dominical. And we also have a few of our products in some small grocery stores within the region. So we've already tackled that and we're growing to provide food, you know, for the whole country. And then the last tier mission for me is to focus on a handful, a small handful, maybe three to five uh, products that have the potential to even export and put around the world. That would be Natalia's chocolate bars, maybe Sacha Inchi nuts, which is a really amazing tropical nut that I think people don't know enough about all over the world and has a big potential. And then, um, you know, I make a product, a coconut butter product that you can find in some health food stores around the world, but it's still not very popular. So that's kind of the, the three tiered mission. And when it comes to getting products, you know, around the world, 
as we talked about before, that can't be as sustainable as just providing food to your local community. But we also mentioned that Natalia and I are people who, while we love sustainability, we also have really big uh, business ambitions. You know, we want to have small farms like this all over the world in every different climate. We're in a tropical Mm -hmm. climate now. I want a small family farm in Italy and Greece to grow figs and olives and things like that. We want a desert farm to grow different cacti and and other things, uh, maybe in a cold climate. So, and as we mentioned before, you need money to thrive in that pursuit, which is why we do want to be a a company where you can find our products and we're successful all around the world. Um, And I've even thought of ways, how can you do that and show this next level of sustainability? Here's just one thing that's been on my mind that you might find interesting. You know, if you go into Whole Foods or your local health food store, maybe you'll be able to find some really cool packaged good where, you know, it mentions this was grown here and the workers are locally. Maybe it it has a little paragraph on the back and you're like, oh, that's cool. I want to support that company. I've never seen this being done. Maybe maybe it has been done because we haven't lived in cities for a long time. I don't think it has. But when we get, for instance, Natalia's chocolate uh, to the United States, I want there to be a QR code on the back of each chocolate bar that you can scan it right there in the store. And a YouTube video comes up and has like a three to five minute video showing the entire process from tree to farm to the employees to the bar of how this product that you're eating, how it got there and explain the whole process and show it. Just have this high level of transparency of what you're eating because the reality is most people when they pick up an item at their store, they have very little knowledge of the reality, what it literally looks like to get from the start of the food that they're about to eat, how it began to the point right now where they're eating it. Um, And so that's that's what we need. We need transparency. there, There are some companies that do something similar but I think what's special about us is that we're actually like on the farm like Mm -hmm. those companies that do it they're like doing the video of something far away and like they're not the actual workers or makers of the product so I think that's unique to us Mm. yeah yes yeah beautiful Uh, yeah I love the traceability aspect of knowing exactly where the beans came from and I mean we're so disconnected from that the majority of the time you know I remember just like most if you ask the question to kids where does your food come from they'll say the grocery store and and that is pretty much as far as we know we don't have the traceability of where it comes from and it would be so amazing to be able to scan and be like oh this is this is how it was made and and that's where that's where the regenerative movement is heading towards in regenerative agriculture we're seeing only 19% of the world actually knows what regenerative agriculture is so it's so important to um to understand that regenerative agriculture is agriculture that is grown organic no till is bringing back um more microbes to the soil, increasing biomass and biodiversity. And it's so amazing to live on a food forest and see the soil growing in front of our eyes, the fruit trees starting to produce. And it is possible to live regeneratively, have businesses that are that are in alignment with our ethics and I think something that you touched on as well is how do we how do we become abundant in the in in these times and many people are you know trying to focus on one thing or another and I think diversity in every way you know diversity in what we plant diversity in our streams of income diversity in our passions and our employees and every aspect of our life is is very important and as when it comes to abundance as well i know that our we have some passive income streams we have 
some streams of income that come from our farm. And we also um, do tours at our farm and farm to table lunches. So there's just, and then I work at Jungle Project as well. So it's like, you really want to diversify your income streams and, and think about how each one of those all play a role in in the ecosystem, just like planting uh, agroforestry system where we're planting, well, let's talk about breadfruit and cacao. Breadfruit is the canopy crop, whereas cacao is like the middle story and ginger and turmeric could be the ground cover and vanilla is growing up the breadfruit. So there's just this beautiful ecosystem that when we talk about regenerative agriculture and food forests and the, and boiling the kind of much of what we're talking about down to in simple terms is, is just our connection to the earth, the way we live and how can we interweave it all so that we are thriving and we are, servant leaders in our communities serving the community our earth and our families and um it's a really beautiful thing and it's super inspiring to hear your story and um and continue to see your amazing business grow and um i would love to open it up to questions and I know some people on here, so we can we can just um, bring you into the conversation. I see Michelle there. You want to pop in here? Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, you can hear me pretty good, yeah. right? Yeah. Hear- okay. Hear- Fantastic. Man, what a great story, Jackson, Natalia. Wow. And Jean, uh, so I've been living in Costa Rica for a year. So I, all of the regenerative farming is totally new to me, but it's in my DNA, right? It is like in us going back to nature, understanding what honoring the land and being a sacred gardener, that's where I am uh, uh, leaning forward. So right now I'm in a, I'm in an apartment, but next week I will be able to live on the um, on the Sofragio Retreat Center, and it has a food forest, and I'll be able to volunteer more at this other finca in the San Salvador, so I can learn more. And, uh, and I did do a permaculture uh, course with, uh, you know, our good friend Lena with Wilder. So, I, you know, I know it takes time, but what, what you guys have been able to do, both of you, in your short time. But it, 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 I know it takes passion. You know, I know it takes passion and commitment to, to uh, doing all the things and, and being really, really smart. So I just want to just share uh, one more thing is that uh, two weeks ago, I went to a conference called the Protopian Convergence Conference in La Fortuna and and Elnor Lada, he was a speaker there. And I'm just going to show his book that it just was um, published. It's called uh, Post-Capitalistic Philanthropy Healing Wealth in the Time of Collapse. And, um, and he's all about regenerative systems, you know, talking everything that you spoke of. Um, but he has the community called Brave Earth. Have you guys heard of it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Yes. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So though his farm or his community is not, um, you know, he's not, um, well, I'm, his more is about um, uh, a more retreat center and then with building within a community, not farming for masses. And I, I'm not sure how, how much food sovereignty, but but it is just talking, speaking to the language of of sacred e- economics and 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 um, growing your own food. So I just wanted to share share, share that with you. And uh, thanks again. Ciao. Yeah, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. 
Thank you. Sounds Thank cool. You. Sounds, Sounds cool. Sounds like an awesome book. Like awesome book. There's just so many levels to it. Like you said, maybe a person is not about like growing the food to sell it or whatever. And it's just, there's levels to it. It can be as simple as growing your own tomatoes, like a pot of tomatoes, or you have a fruit tree and sharing it with your neighbors. Like mm -hmm. there's levels to all of it. Us like sharing, selling our bananas in the community and then exporting chocolate to the U.S. and then sharing our story there and levels to everything. <laughs> yeah, and all the levels are great. Just, yeah, exactly. Passion. I'm glad you brought up passion. Like, it's so amazing in life. I feel like we live in a time where so many people are confused about exactly what direction they should go or what they should do. I think Natalia and I are really just lucky, blessed people that we are just oozing with passion. We're only doing this because we care about it. We thought about the business or financial part way after. We're like, okay, we need to plant trees, live on the land, live in harmony, and try to reduce our, our negative carbon footprint. That just is in our blood. That's our passion. That's what literally like gets us off and out of the bed the most every single day. And so now we, we said that's just a, a deal breaker. We need to do that. And then let's think about how we can do it financially sustainably and have a family and mm -hmm. fulfill our other passions. But yeah, there's no point in even talking about this. If anyone is interested in like moving towards this lifestyle, if it's not already just a complete passion that, you know, we see ourselves as, as human animals that only in the last couple hundred years have diverged from living completely harmonious and connected as deep as possible with the earth and we think that is an admirable way to move towards that versus the way that we grew up where it's purely disconnected so yeah it all stems from passion and the cool thing is i think most people are passionate about it we've seen in the last decade or you could say two decades the boom of people caring about sustainability and lowering their negative carbon footprint it's it's universal it's in every country it's in every community it doesn't matter what you look like where you come from you know y young people especially but older people too are are acknowledging that the way that we've been living in our globalized capitalist system has inherent uh negative consequences from the earth to the animals to humans to our mentality and our emotions and and everything so um, yeah, a lot of people are getting passionate about it, and we are too. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I call it um, just do less harm. If we can just do less harm, what a win for Mother Earth. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I what I like to think about the definition of regeneration is leaving it better than we found it, and that we can't just live sustainably it's a, like sustaining it we need to bring back more abundance and improve the soils and just the last hundred years we've lost 80 percent of our forests of our biodiversity and our generations really woken up to see that we need to reverse some of this uh capitalism that has been extractive and we need to shift our ways to be m regenerative and making it better than we found it and obviously like we like jackson mentioned like there's always a fine line between okay if we are going global like at jungle foods we are starting to export and it it was controversial in our team because of exactly um, what Jackson mentioned of just the carbon that it takes to get things to other places. And how can we look at all of our choices and see what is best for the earth, for ourselves, for our communities? And yeah, so... Let's go into some last words and comments. 
Um, anyone else have any questions or comments they want to bring up? Can I just mention one more thing? Yeah. That we were talking about passion and I think like there's so many people in the world that they're just not going to choose to go buy a farm, get land and farm. They just don't want to. They don't have that in them. It's just a reality that yeah. I don't know what percentage it is of the world that are urban. They're going to, there. I don't know. Our, one of our employees doing weed whacking out on the food forest. And so that's why you hear the noise. So I don't know. If I, I Actually, it. it's muting it for some reason. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. We don't hear it. We don't hear it. No, they can't hear it too much. Would, All right. Our it, baby just saw it. They can't hear oh, it. Oh, it's, it's no, okay. We're, we're, we're wrapping up the webinar um, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to say that um, those, those people that are in cities, they still want to do some good. They're still going to buy chocolate. They're still going to buy tahini, whatever, nuts spread. So they, they have options at the supermarket. And when they see your product, Jungle Foods, or ours, they can, like, see. That's what's also tricky for us. We have to find in marketing and whatever. What can we do to attract that person to buy our product yeah. and share our story so that they're Maybe they're not directly farming, but they're supporting the people who are. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. As being conscious consumers, you know, yeah. like, like we were talking about conscious capitalism. How can we be conscious consumers and really choose and select the products with the companies that are doing the work like mm -hmm. you two are and like we are and there are many others. So just looking on the back of <laughs> doing the research, you know, there's not many companies that are traceable. I was doing some research on <laughs> what companies are actually showing the traceability of where. And yeah. I could find one. It was a cashew company, an organic cashew company that um showed the source of where their farms were similar to what you kind of mentioned jackson of scanning the the code or whatever mm -hmm. um but there's just not traceability in our food system and yeah so just giving everyone the inspiration to start small with small steps towards regeneration of our mind our body our businesses our ecosystems like Natalia said, we can start as small as just like one pot of tomatoes or five of your favorite herbs, just starting to gain the connection to the soil, to the earth. You don't have to just start a farm. <laughs> you can you can apply these principles of permaculture, of um, of regenerative agriculture, of regeneration in your entire ecosystem and um it doesn't need to be starting a farm we know that not everyone is is on this track and we are i know all of us are multi-passionate and we can have so many we can have a handful of passions that we play with every day and that make our holistic lives so just wanting to plant the seed of being a conscious capitalist starting a regenerative business and and thriving with our environment, partnering with nature. And um, maybe a last word from you two. Oh, I think we covered yeah. everything. Uh, yeah, Michelle put it great. Try to try to do less harm. Take responsibility one day at a time for more things in your life. Um, everything from your water to your food, to your transportation, to your clothing. And also, uh, don't be too hard on yourself and don't take it too seriously. Cause at the end of the day, uh, the earth will go on, the universe will go on. We're just here making our small little impacts. And you also have to enjoy life and laugh along the way, even during the hard times or in the disturbing realities because we're just tiny little organisms in an infinite universe and we're not doing any harm to other galaxies. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Even if we live un un unsustainably. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you. Yeah, we really oh, yeah. appreciate you on this um, web series and your knowledge and inspiration. And yeah, and and if you want to follow our journey, we actually post a lot on my our uh, Instagram page called Plantriotic, like patriotic, but plant. And uh, there you can find my YouTube channel as well, where I have thousands of videos along my journey over the last like nine years I've been posting on there. We have videos of our farm. And if you scroll down, you see videos of my bike travels. And then, yeah, Natalia posts on her Instagram too. I give that Naturalia to them. Naturalia love. Naturalia, <laughs> Naturalia love. Uh, and so we're posting about our farm, our, our business, chocolate making, all the stuff. You can get in contact with us there as well. Amazing. I dropped in the links and I'll put them in the replay as well. And you also can visit Jackson and Natalia's farm mm -hmm. for farm tours and you can visit our farm as well. We do farm to table lunches and um, some permaculture and master classes and yeah, workshops. We have so cabins. You can even live on our farm. Uh -huh. So yeah, there's lots of opportunities. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us and Thank you. This was really fun. Thanks for the opportunity. From our gardens to yours, <laughs> um, we wish you regeneration in all ways. Take care, everyone. Peace. Gracias. Thank you.